Hello everyone and welcome to Rob Unwraps Ultimate Guide for the Amrine Excavation. In this video, I'll cover the locations of all the caches, the named enemies you'll encounter, and strategies on how to defeat the two bosses in the excavation, as well as a solution to the puzzle to unlock the bridge. This expedition is located just north of Windsward. Amrine Excavation is the first expedition that is available to adventurers in New World. Through the course of normal questing, you'll receive a main story quest that will guide you to go to the Amrine Excavation to pick up a heart gem. In order to unlock the excavation, you'll need a key that can be acquired from the main story quest. These keys can also be crafted. The keys are called tuning orbs. You will only need one key for an entire group, but once that key is consumed, you'll lose it. This means a group of five players, each with a key, can run the instance five times before you'll need to look for more keys or potentially different party members. Outside of the excavation is the good boy, Barkamedes. Barkamedes will offer you a repeatable quest to defeat star excavation ravagers and collect their succulent bones. There are five star excavation ravagers in the instance, but you only need three bones. This means that you can leave the instance midway through after completing the quest, turn it in, and then go back in and get an additional two of the three bones you'll need to complete the quest. So you'll be able to complete this quest three times from only running the dungeon twice. You can't all leave the dungeon at once. However, four people can leave, one can stay in, then once those initial players come back into the instance, the last player can go out, turn their quest in, and come back in with everyone else and complete the instance. Roughly 5,000 experience points from completing this quest is a pretty big chunk and worth the minor inconvenience of leaving the dungeon and coming back in. There are six named mobs in the Amrine excavation, not counting the two bosses. You'll find Tainted Tanner, who's hardy, Zippy, who has a cold aura, Burnt Becca, who's armored, Mad McKenzie, which is fire resistant, Safety Officer Richards, who is an abomination and is explosive, and Frozen Forest, who's brutal. Neither of these named monsters will require a lot of coordination. They are mostly tank and spank fights, just like all the trash you'll find in this instance. The only real challenges you'll face in the instance are the two actual bosses, Foreman Nakashima, who is brutal and resistant to ice, and Simon Gray, who's frozen and hardy. There are six chests in the Amrine excavation. The first is located behind a tent next to a star excavation withered nest in the room where you'll fight Zippy. The second is hidden behind a waterfall. Once you are in the Grand Traverse and make a left to head down to one of the pressure plates, jump off into the water and you'll find this chest tucked away. There's also some mining nodes down here. The third is located behind a pillar in the hidden vestibule. The fourth is by a stack of crates next to where you fight the foreman. There is also a note located here. The fifth is up on a ledge in the room where you fight the foreman. And the sixth and final is located after you defeat Simon Gray. There are three pages to the Star Excavation Journal located in the instance. The first is on your left as you enter. The second is on the stairs on the way up to the bridge in the Grand Traverse. The third page is located next to a chest where you'll summon the foreman. The fourth and final page is outside next to Barkimedes. In order to solve the puzzle of the Grand Traverse, you'll need to step on three platforms at the same time. When you do, the bridge will complete. I've marked those locations of the platforms on this map. Most of the trash in here is simple tank and spank, so I won't walk you through the entire instance. There's a main story quest that directs you where you need to go. Just watch out for the withered nests. You need to kill those or they will continue to summon Lost. Foreman Nakashima has one main trick in his undead bag. He will summon a pink ring on the ground and you need to get out of it. If you are left inside the ring, you'll be stunned and waves of ghosts will hit you and do quite a good tick of damage to you in the process. As long as you can avoid this ring, the foreman should go down rather easy. The final boss is Simon Gray. He has three primary attacks. Have the tank grab aggro on the boss and Simon will focus his melee attacks on the tank. He'll do a double fisted overhead front ground attack that will deal physical damage in a circle in front of him. Simon's punching the ground and he's punching anything in his way. 
He also has another frontal attack where he vomits a cone in front of him that does elemental damage. This will be indicated because he'll stop and start to retch and then he vomits in a frontal cone. Lastly, and this is the big one, he will summon waves roughly every 20 seconds of adds. While the tank focuses on holding Simon, DPS need to burn down these adds. These are your number one priority. And if you don't kill the ads fast enough, you could become overwhelmed with them. Simon is not the threat in this battle. He's easily managed by the tank and a healer. His waves of ads are the primary threat. So tank aggro Simon, healer keep tank alive, DPS kill ads, healer help keep the DPS alive that take damage, and if you can, deal a bit of damage yourself to the ads as well. Hopefully, with the correct life staff skills, you'll be able to deal damage and heal party members at the same time. That's it. You've completed the Amrine Expedition, and you can now collect your heart gem, and don't forget to loot that last supply stockpile. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and check out the rest of my videos on New World. Until next time, thanks.